if you have a pressure washer with a bad pump, do not take it to the repair shop. Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. I hope everybody's having a great week. Today we are talking pressure washers. Why yours won't pump, how to tell if your pump is bad, and how to replace it if you need to. Hopefully this video will save you some time, money, and frustration in the future. Now let me show you something. Now why do I have this pressure washer that was a customer's given to me? It looks almost brand new, right? With a bad pump. Why do I have this pressure washer over here? given to me with a bad pump. Why do I have the pressure washer sitting over there given to me with a bad pump? Or how about that one with a bad pump, that one with a bad pump, that one with a bad pump? Why do I have all of these pressure washers with bad pumps that customers just give to me? And what's funny is this scary thing is the one we use. If you have a pressure washer with a bad pump, do not take it to the repair shop. One of a few things is gonna happen. Either they're going to give you an astronomical price to fix it, you're gonna say screw it and leave it there. You're gonna pay a diagnosing fee because you don't wanna fix it and still come home with a broken machine. Or three, they are gonna fix it and they're gonna charge you two thirds the price of a new one. But you can fix it yourself so easy. Now at my repair shop, we would get in over 2000 pieces of equipment every single year and probably about 150 to 200 of those would be pressure washers. And out of those 150 to 200, probably 30 to 40 every single year would be left at my shop. The owners did not want them because they had a bad pump. Now pumps vary in prices, usually from about $125 on up, depending on how good of a pressure washer you have. But once you have a $125 to $175 pump, plus the $40 labor for us to install it, you're usually looking at two thirds the price of a brand new pressure washer. So customers just don't wanna do it. So I end up with a bunch of good engines with bad pumps and nothing to put them on because the crankshafts are too short. You can't make a push mower out of them, but I still hold on to them because a lot of times I will get good pressure washer pumps with a bad engine and I will make one pressure washer out of two. In fact, I did that in one of my first videos, a trash to treasure. I'll leave a link right up above if you wanna see that. But why is your pump not working? Well, it could be a few things. First of all, you're going to want to check your wand. There are many times that there is something clogged inside of the wand that could be the culprit. You'll want to take apart each section of your wand and make sure there's nothing clogged. Now, if your wand and hose are good, next, check this. The reason that I'm pretty sure that the pump went bad on this one was they all have a inlet screen inside where the water goes in. And this one was completely compacted with goo. Yours might look like this or have a metal mesh like that. If your screen doesn't have debris in it, and hopefully you still have a screen there, believe me, there's many times that people lost their screen out of their pressure washer pump, didn't realize it, I've done it before, and went ahead and used it and debris would get sucked up into the pump and ruin it immediately. But if you have a clean screen and a good wand and hose, next, check your water pressure. There were times at my old repair shop where I couldn't even test a customer's pressure washer because I was afraid that I didn't have enough pressure to make it run correctly. If you hook yours up to a spigot that does not have good pressure, it's not gonna let enough water into the pump. It will overheat and burn up. Now the biggest reason that pumps burn up or yours is on the way to burning up is because did you know you're not supposed to ever let your pressure washer idle? Every second you do, it's wearing out the pump. Now, I've already made an extremely detailed video of why you should never let your pressure washer idle. I will leave it in the description box below. But if you actually read the owner's manual, it will tell you do not let your pressure washer idle for over 60 seconds or you can burn it up. Nobody knows this. I didn't know this. So the longer you let it idle, the hotter your pump is getting with that water inside and the quicker it's going to burn up. And last, if you live in a cold area, do not leave it outside. The water that stays in it all the time will freeze and crack your pump. All right, so you've checked everything and you're pretty sure you got a bad pump. Now, this is where you've got to decide. How old's your engine? Does it still run really well? Is it only a couple years old like this one? Is it worth putting $125 to $175 pump on? On those big ones, if you've got a good engine, the pump might be three to $400, but the pressure washer is a thousand bucks. This is where you got to weigh it and say, do I want to put the money into it if I can fix it myself? 
because if I can do it, you can do it. Now, the good thing about pressure washer pumps is most of them have a number right on them that you can find quite easily. And all you gotta do is Google that part number. So for instance, like my scary pressure washer here, it's got a model and part number right on the pump. Now there's two ways you can go about looking up the part number to get the pump. You can either directly get the part number right off the pump itself, and sometimes it'll give you a hodgepodge of different pumps, and you're gonna have to actually look at your pump, look at what you're buying, and make sure everything matches up. I would buy it off someplace like Amazon, that way you know you can return it easily. You can also go from the model number of the machine itself. Oh look, I don't even have to look at a parts list. I just popped in Simpson model MS60773, and then it was the first thing that popped up. It's pump, and it's only $119.99. How about that? Now, the only thing slightly precarious about the situation is how you're going to unbolt it and bolt it back on. Because if you have it laying back like this, the bolts that hold the pump on also hold the engine on. So the engine's gonna fall off whenever you remove the pump. The best way to do it is to have it sitting straight up, mounted up on something so you can see underneath. Now, if you're removing one of these three-legged vertical pumps, um, most all of them that I know of take a half inch. To, it's got a half inch bolt head and a half inch nut. So you're just gonna wanna grab some half inch tools to take it off. You're just gonna stop your nut up top. And I put a rag underneath because the pump is going to fall down whenever you go to take it off. Just like that. Now, when you get a new pump, it should come with a new keyway. So you don't need it for that, but you might want to hold on to this if you have a rider because th these keys will also fit in the rear transaxle of your riding mower to um, keep your tire moving. A lot of people, they remove their rear tire and it falls out and they don't even know it's there. But yeah, that's what holds your, your rim to your axle is a small little key like that. Now you will want to go ahead and clean off your crankshaft. Um, I would not spray anything directly on it because you don't want to mess up your seal. Put some, some kind of solvent on your rag and clean it off that way. Now I did not buy a brand new pump to put on this machine because I'm going to wait for one to come in with a bad engine and a good pump and <laughs> make two out of one like I always do. But if you do order one, some of them will look slightly different. Some of the aftermarket ones you'll need to Make sure that if you have an aftermarket one, if there's any kind of spacers, be mindful on if this actually mounts up flush because sometimes you will need spacers because if you go to tighten it down and you're tightening one, the other one will break off on you. Believe me, ask me how I know. So <laughs> also there might be slight variations in it. Sometimes this will be longer where the water hooks up that's okay, that's not a big deal. You just wanna make sure that it is going to mount correctly. If it has a spacer inside, make sure you put the spacer back. These are sealed units, so you don't have to add oil to them. It's pretty easy, and doing it yourself is gonna save you a ton of time, money, and frustration. Oh, one more thing, whenever you go to put it together, you're going to want to, you can move, the inside of the shaft of your pump around for the keyway, and you can move your engine crankshaft. That way you can line everything up to line up the um, keyway to where you can see it correctly, and then you can move your legs into place, and that'll be a little easier. Once you start to mount it back on, finger tighten the bolts and nuts, and once you have all of them finger tight, pull your pull rope a couple times and make sure that there's nothing binding. If there is, you might have an issue. If there isn't, you're good to go to tighten it down the rest of the way. Now, why does nobody fix pumps? I mean, you would think, just go inside of it, change out some O-rings, it'd be fine. Well, for a long time, they didn't sell the internal parts, so nobody ever fixed them. They just replaced the entire unit. Then, once they did start coming out with the O-ring kits, they were like $70 and $80 when you can get a whole pump for $140. Bucks. And with that bad taste in our mouth, we sure weren't going to do that. And then once the parts got cheap a few years ago, not like a long time ago, just a few years ago, we were just to a point to where we we're like, screw it, we're not gonna fix any pumps. I did try to repair a couple in my day, but one of them that came in, it was a super expensive pump, completely tore it apart, got the pump kit for it, all the O-rings and everything, went to go put it back together, 
to put it back together, didn't work, took it apart, put it back together, didn't work, to find out that there was a piece that had completely disintegrated inside of it that you couldn't get that I didn't even know was supposed to be in there because I had never worked on the pumps before. And after I spent hours and hours and hours trying to fix it, I failed. So I never did it again. And that's why all repair shops just replace pumps. So don't take it to a repair shop. You can do it all by yourself. Save you some money. You can try an aftermarket. Get it off Amazon. It's super easy to return if you get the wrong one or you decide you don't want to do it. But don't throw away a good engine when you just got a bad pump. Oh, and before I head out, I did want to tell you guys, if you've watched this entire video, then you're one of my troopers. I know, one of my good viewers. If you are watching this video as it comes out in the morning, Ron is in the middle of getting his complete hip replacement. So if you could think about him and put him in your thoughts and prayers, that would be great. So guys, hopefully this video will save you some time, money, and frustration in the future. Give you a little confidence to fix it yourself. If you find yourself coming back over and over again, think about hitting that subscribe button. It helps out the algorithm and make my videos shown to more people to save them time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found me at Facebook, find me at facebook.com slash chicanic. Find me on Instagram at the real chicanic or find me at chicanic.com where you can get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks guys and have a great day.